you just want to spell the last name for me? Uh, it's M U L R O O N E Y. All right. State your name and address for the record. Michelle Mulrooney, Los Angeles, California, 90067. Ms. Mulrooney, what is your occupation? I'm a partner at Venable LLP, an attorney practice. Could you just please describe a brief, give me a brief description of your educational background and work history? Okay, I um, attended USC and received my undergraduate degree in 1982. And then I again attended USC and received my law degree in 1985. Um, I then worked for Gibson, Dunn and Crutcher until 1991 and then I worked for an entertainment law firm that was originally called Armstrong Hirsch when I joined it then later morphed into several names um, and then in, in 2011 I joined Venable LLP as a partner. Thank you. What are your areas of practice and expertise? Um, I'm in this, I'm head of the estate planning, the West Coast estate planning group for Venable. And does that estate planning involve any aspect of marital estate planning, such as things like prenups and postnups, prenuptials, postnuptials? Yes, we frequently do prenups, cohabitation, and postnup agreements for all. Would you please briefly describe what a prenuptial and a postnuptial is? A prenuptial agreement is where spouses contract on the economics of their marriage before they are married, married, and they discuss things as the nature and they contract the things as the nature of the property, community separate, etc., and also things like spousal support. And in a post-up, the clients do that after they're married. The same, they contract on the same issues. Do you regularly represent actors? Yes. Um, I'm asking very narr narrowly, did there come a time when Amber Heard contacted you for representation respecting a prenup or a post-up agreement? At some point, I was contacted about an Amber Heard prenup. Ms. Mulroney, I'm going to show you what has been marked as exhibit number three. And it's an email from you to a Dana Lowry. Do you know who Dana Lowry is? Yes. Yeah. And could you please tell us who Dana Lowry is? She's a family law attorney practicing in Los Angeles. And this is dated Monday, February 2, 2015, and says, I look forward to working with you. Please send me, this is from you, please send me the bullet points for the economics of the deal. When you are back in the office tomorrow, I will have Amber's business manager get her financial information to me ASAP. I also like to exchange two years of tax returns, but not attach them. Is this your general practice? Let me know. Think. Who did Dana Lowry represent? Johnny Depp. I take it Amber in, in the actual document is Amber Heard. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And if, if I just direct your attention to the top of the email where it says February 2, 2015. Uh, what, if anything, does this do to refresh your recollection on when approximately you uh, were contacted about representing Amber Heard in connection with the prenup? It makes the approximate date more clear to me. Okay. And based on this, when approximately were you contacted 
to represent Amber Heard in connection with the prenup or postnup? The early part of February, the late part of January or the early part of February 2015. Ms. Mulroney, I'm going to ask you to take a look at what has been marked as exhibit number four. And it is a, uh, an email from you to Dana Lowey, which is Mr. Depp's counsel, correct? During this time period, correct. Um, and it's dated Tuesday, February 3. And I'm going to scroll down first so we get the earliest part of it. And the first part of it is an email from Dana Lowey to you dated February 3rd at 10.13 and says J slash A deal points. Do you know what J slash A means? I'm, I'm going to take you first of all to the bottom part, which is the J slash deal points. Do you have an understanding of what J slash A means? I, I believe it means Johnny slash Amber deal points. Absent a prenuptial agreement or a postnuptial agreement, is California what we call a common law property state? No. What is it? It's a community property state. Okay, and what does that mean? Generally means that all earnings after the date of marriage are owned 50% each party has an undivided 50% interest in those earnings. Yes. What was your understanding of the purpose of the confidentiality agreement? It's very standard when you're doing a prenuptial agreement or a postnuptial agreement when either party is closing their assets that they ask for a confidentiality agreement. You respond on February 17, uh, Dana, I have forwarded to Amber. She is filming a movie, but hope to connect with her by the end of the week. I will keep trying to move forward. I'm asking you what you meant by I will keep trying to move forward. I assume I meant that we're trying to get a postnuptial agreement signed between the parties, and that's what I was hired for show you what has been marked as exhibit number seven and I'm going to start again with going down to show you where the stream is here and it says oh, on, on February 17 that's the same email we've seen a couple times now where she, she's attaching the confidentiality agreement telling you she'll have a draft post-nap agreement, uh, but she's getting the, the uh, signed confidentiality agreement first. And then I'm going to direct your attention to the very top part, and that is Wednesday, February 18. And you're, it's from you to Dan Lowry, and it says, Amber is sending the signed confidentiality agreement to you. To me, I assume I will receive all, all the underlying financials and a list of anticipated future revenue streams and documentation pertaining thereto. <laughs> what did you mean by underlying financials and a list of anticipated future revenue streams and documentation pertaining thereto? I mean, this is typical for an actor. They have profit participations, uh, back ends. I wanted to have a list of what his future revenue would be he might have had movies booked um, that he would render services after marriage. I just wanted to see the pro bono. What did you mean by back end? Back end is either profit participation or royalties. Um, sometimes it's box office bonuses. You just have to look at the underlying. Um, agreement on each movie, TV show, etc. to to track what the revenue will be from each project. And why is that relevant? I want to know what they're going to make during the marriage. I want to know the income during the marriage. And those are all components of what they make during the marriage? Correct. 
Okay, thank you. All right, and then you said, I can't really comment on the document until I get this information. What document were you referring to there? The post nap agreement that I anticipated she would send. How much time expired between when you were sent the confidentiality agreement for Amber Heard to sign and when you indicated back to counsel for Mr. Depp that Amber is sending the signed confidentiality agreement to you? The next day. What, if any, communication did you receive from Mr. Depp in connection with the post nap agreement? I received one telephone call. And whom did you receive that telephone call from? Mr. Depp. Please describe the telephone call from Mr. Depp. My recollection is that he was very mean, that he called me names, and that he fired me on behalf of them. When you say that he was very mean, what did you mean? Well, my only exact recollection is he called me a bitch. Mr. Depp called you a bitch on that telephone call? You're saying, leaving. What, if any, observations did you make during the telephone call from Mr. Depp, during which time he called you a bitch? I thought he was under the influence. Why did you think that? He was slurring his words, and his speech pattern was similar to my children's speech pattern when they were under the influence. I was just extremely rattled by the call. I was on the phone for a very short time with him because he was represented by counsel, and I didn't want to be rude and hang up, but I told him I had to hang up. Like, after two or three minutes, after I realized what was happening, it took me very off guard. And that's all I remember is that it really shook me up. After that phone call, did you perform any further services for Ms. Hurd in connection with the post-nuptial agreement? No. Do you recall ever seeing a post-nuptial draft agreement? No. Has either Ms. Hurd or Mr. Depp contacted you at any time after the call with Mr. Depp respecting pursuing a post-nuptial agreement? No. Who, if anyone, was paying your legal services? I don't recall. Was it your understanding that Mr. Depp had the authority to fire you? No. Did you tell him that? I don't recall. And isn't it true that he wouldn't have had the authority to fire you even if he were paying for your legal services? True? True. What, if any, communications did you have with Dana Lowy about your conversation with Mr. Depp after the conversation with Mr. Depp? I don't recall specifically. What do you recall generally, if anything? I do recall that I told her that I was no longer representing him. But I don't know if I did that in writing. Somehow she knew. But I, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you testified that Mr. Depp did not have the authority to fire you, correct? Correct. Ms. Mulroney, when did your attorney-client relationship with Ms. Hurd relating to a potential post-nuptial agreement terminate? Shortly after that phone call. When you say shortly after that phone call, 
Um, can you give us a time frame of how how long it was after the phone call? Within a few days, could be one. He didn't. Ha he didn't have the power to fire you, correct? Correct. Do you have any recollection of ever receiving any more communications from Dana Lowry furthering the postnuptial agreement? after Johnny Depp called you and told you he was firing you on behalf of Amber and called you names? No substantive. I recall that there was no more substantive conversations. Is there any question in your mind that it was Mr. Depp who called you? No. 